Hey loves, it's Britt, and in this video I'm talking about the sun conjunct to the moon in a natal chart. So this is a natal aspect video. If you were born with this in your natal chart or you know someone that was born with this conjunction, let's talk about it. So these people are very charismatic and um, they're essentially, you know, born when it's um, a new moon. So there's no moon in the sky. It's like they are ripe for the new beginning in this lifetime. You could even say, and I'm not sure that this would be true in every single case, but I feel like in some cases you could say that this person is a new soul. They've at least chosen to come into this lifetime with a more blank slate or a more um, single pointed focus than others. So there's definitely something very special about this person. They're usually very popular, like I said, very charismatic. Um, there's something about them that others notice because they have a very strong energy field. And you want to look at what um, is stronger. Is it the sun or the moon? So like, for example, um, if the moon is in a strong sign that it rules or is exalted, like, you know, Cancer or Taurus, um, for example, you could have maybe the moon is stronger and they're going to be more lunar influence. The moon, they're going to be very emotionally based and um, very much ruled by their emotions. Now, if sun is stronger, for example, sun in Aries or Leo, um, you're going to see someone with more authoritative um, or sunny qualities. Or even if um, sun is like in fire or air, um, you could see that they're more solar, they're more um, authoritative, uh, strong leadership, um, potentially a bit bossy, or you can even see a little bit of narcissism with this conjunction. And it's not coming from um, a bad place, like, so it's not coming from um, a conscious place. It's coming from just the fact that their outward solar masculine energies are burnt up in the, or their, no, sorry, the lunar energies, the moon, the inner self, the feminine self, the receptive side are burnt up by the solar, the sun side. And so there's just a very natural self focus or, you know, tinging on self-absorption that's very natural, very unconscious to the person. So it's not deliberate, um, but they can just definitely have a hard time with objectivity, you know, seeing beyond their own nose. Um, they can actually be very stubborn people. Um, because their inner world is merged with their outer world in a way that, you know, it's hard for them to see what is occurring outside of them, right? And so everything in their life is occurring, you know, relevant to them. It's hard for them to really be personal or personable with you um, unless moon is stronger and we've got other Neptune things going on. Um, if, you know, if they're like, there's some Neptune aspect involved in this, then that could be different. But a lot of the times you're going to see people who have a hard time relating with other people actually. And they so, so, so desire to that this conjunction, um, from a very early age, you know, they're going to feel like, um, they have a special destiny to be with a perfect partner with the sun conjunct to the moon we, moon, we have our masculine and feminines are merged. And so there's this very strong desire to meet with someone on a soulmate level. But the relationships are not always easy with this conjunction because um, women with this conjunction can be very um, masculine, um, very dominant. And, um, you know, they may end up attracting a partner who's more 
uh, lunar, like the moon, more, you know, nurturing, caretaking, cancerian energy. Um, and it's it can sort of be a role reversal with people with this conjunction. Um, sometimes, in some cases, you got to look at Venus and Mars and everything else too. But in some cases with the sun conjunct to moon, you're going to see a woman or someone dominant in the female or feminine polarity to attract someone who is... Um, more feminine because they are more masculine and vice versa with men with this conjunction we can see that um the women that they attract can be uh more dominant more masculine um more solar now that's not going to be true in every single case but because of that and because of their lack of re receptivity that they can have and don't worry i'm going to talk about the positives of this conjunction because i still think this is one of the most favorable aspects you could have so don't think i'm talking too negatively about you guys i wish i had the sun conjunct the moon i have the sun squared a moon and i envy you guys but um yeah so because of that like difficulty in relating with others because they're just so one-sided at times um relationships can be difficult because it's hard for them to truly relate but yet they want it so 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 bad so it's it's common to have difficulties in relationships actually with this conjunction or very interesting relationships uh like i said sort of unconventional sometimes like i said the the woman can be more masculine and the man can be more feminine it, it's it's very interesting how this manifests but in whatever way that it manifests it's very interesting to observe the life of a sun conjunct moon person they inwardly do feel like they have an extraordinary destiny and um they often do um in relation to so you want to look at the sign and the house and other aspects that are taking place connected to this conjunction um, because there is a very distinct person or purpose sorry very distinct purpose when we have the sun conjunct moon it's a, a single-minded focus toward that energy. That energy is being birthed through this person. That is their, one of their purposes, you know, you want to look at the ascendant too in the north node, but like the sun conjunct to moon shows that inwardly and outwardly we are going towards the, th the same thing and we can be like a steamroller. You know, we can just keep going like a train, like we do not stop until we get to the goal, right? So these people can be very motivated. You can see them um, even, you know, from high school have very strong goals, you know, sometimes university and like go all the way to their chosen career, their field, like nothing will stop these people. Nothing will get in their way. The only thing though, is if this is afflicted, like square to Neptune, square to Saturn, um, it can be an excruciating, painful life and difficult life because now we have this conjunction which is so dominant it's such a big part of our personalities it's like we cannot exist without it it's just such a strong influence to have in the natal chart even at a wider orb you know up to 10 like this is a very strong aspect so if it's afflicted if it's square to saturn ouch if it's square to neptune if it's square to pluto square to uranus you're going to probably be okay but you're very very difficult and hard to pin down but certain squares it's uh it can be very damaging because we still can't see outside ourselves and now we have this wound and this conflict that we're forced to deal with and um it can be a very painful life and we also don't want to ask for help when we have this conjunction because there's that um bias you know we don't see what's wrong we can't see ourselves truthfully and um it can be very very difficult now it still shows even more so maybe with hard aspects to it it shows such a big purpose um connected to these energies and um it will have to be focused on there's no avoiding the power of this conjunction because it's very powerful so yeah these people are um i do believe it's a lifetime of new beginnings for them it's a lifetime for them to forge a new path they have tons of creative energy although they might not always have the confidence to 
um, believe in themselves, if they can work on that, if they can have a, you know, someone like a mentor or someone to help them achieve their greatness, because sometimes they can't directly see themselves, right? If they can have someone to mirror back how amazing they are, how talented they are, because they're going to have talents, they're going to have genius, okay? Um, and they definitely have a very emotional connection to their goals, which is why they do often succeed because um, everything they do has such meaning and purpose behind it and feeling, right? Because they can't separate their ego, their goals, their son, their purpose from their emotional self. So they are powerful manifestors. If they would only know this, right? Um, they have a great advantage um, in being able to accomplish and dreams into reality with this conjunction. Um, it's truly extraordinary. Many geniuses, uh, many amazingly talented people. You want to look at the uh, sign and the house placement to see what those talents are or yeah, even other aspects. Um, because there's definitely a gift. There's a gift for something, there's a talent, and there's enough self-focus and energy toward your own path to achieve it that, yeah, you can do um, amazing, amazing things. So another thing about this conjunction, so we have a few focuses. We have our grand destiny. We have relationships, our huge focus. Um, we also have um, a big focus on family. So the family of upbringing is very significant and very um, powerfully influential to this person. Now, usually it's gonna be in a positive way. Um, and you're gonna see like the, the classic, look at that thumbs up, the classic, I don't know why it does that, that's so funny. <laughs> um, examples like in astrology books the classic examples of sun moon aspects would say that in the sun conjunct to moon natal chart people their parents were united as one they were together maybe um their energies combined in a singular way to influence the native whereas we can see with the square the opposition the square the parents were at odds fighting not in agreement about how to raise the child. The opposition, they were opposites, okay? The trine of the sextile, they got along well. They were different enough, but similar enough, you know, complementary. With the conjunction, it shows the parental force, they were united. Um, and you know, it could still show a difficult upbringing, but for some reason, this person did not take that on. They didn't take it into their consciousness. They didn't allow it to split their psyche. Their psyche, their inner masculine and feminine are united as one being, one being. So usually the upbringing, the parents, the family of origin has had a huge influence on this person. And it can be very hard for them to see outside of that, you know, to, um, it, it like if it was negative, it can be hard for them to distance themselves from that family. There's a very Cancerian quality to this conjunction that's very much rooted in the past and um, the the tradition. You can see that a little bit with all sun moon aspects, but especially the conjunction, it's like we're so close to that upbringing, we're so close to that fourth house ties um, that it's just very influential. So they can hold a lot of the traits of the parents in themselves. Um, the, the father could have been someone very powerful or influential in society. The mother was also a very powerful influence, which is why there's that tendency for men to attract a more dominant woman. So it's actually likely that both parents were just very dominant in the child's life and their upbringing in, in growing up. Now squares to the sun and moon are going to show that their the powerful influence was perhaps off, also negative, right? Um, but it was powerful nonetheless. So w one of their life lessons could be how to learn to take from that family of origin, that upbringing, that family line, those parental figures, take those beliefs um, that resonate, 
take those on and consciously decide to not take on the toxic stuff, the junk, the rest. Because this conjunction is a really tough one to be able to distance from that upbringing from the family. And if you're lucky, hopefully that upbringing was very positive. And in some cases, you could see a very good childhood with this conjunction, in some cases. Um, a childhood that reinforced the individual's identity. And this is one of the reasons why they are so single focused, why they um, are perhaps a little bit self-centered without realizing it, because they were brought up in a way that, like, with so much energy, maybe they were, you know, like an only child or like the star child or like, you know, the golden child. And um, that brought confidence. So you could see that. You could see that kind of behavior or that, that kind of energy of feeling like you are the center point of the world, which in some cases is, is healthy because this is your life. This is your destiny, right? Other people may take issue with that at times, but whatever. This is your life. This is your new moon um, personal destiny, this new beginning lifetime that you've chosen. And as long as you're aware that you can come off like that at times, it doesn't need to be a harmful trait. So, what else? What else? Yeah, I think it's um, an amazing, very interesting aspect to see. These people are very exciting to watch. They can have an easier time at a lot of things. Um, some people wouldn't consider this conjunction easy, though, because there's just so much power and energy. Um, and I'm not saying that it's easy, but when they focus on something they can have it easier than um, people that have the sun and moon afflicted or uh, just not connecting at all. There's a lot of power when we have our sun and moon conjunct in our natal chart. So I'd love to know your experience of this conjunction. If you have it in your natal chart, was it like this? Is it like this? Is it not? Let me know in the comments, you guys. And thank you for your requests. Keep them coming in the comments. Love you guys so much and talk soon. Bye.